All right, what we want to look at now are systems of equations. And so systems of equations, it's the idea that when you have two things happening at once. We, we looked at that when we looked at the bridge tolls. We had the 2.5 times x and the 1.0 times x plus 21. And this created two systems of equations. And we looked at the point where they intersected as being a solution. It was some value that if we put into each one, they solved both equations. Now in algebra, we kind of have a rule that um, if you need a solution where it's a, a, a solution for two variables, then you need two equations. And three variables, you need three and four and so on. And so the more variables you have, the larger your system of equation has to be to get a unique solution, some place where there is one answer that, w that solves both. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at systems of equations in two variables, and we're going to work on ways of solving them. Um, but the thing about systems of equations, and we'll use our lines as an example here. Let me draw three sets of axes to show you the three possibilities. Now these three possibilities exist in different forms for any system of equations, be it two, three, four variables. But we'll do it um, in, in two variables, an x and a y. So let me label my axes x, y, x, y, x, y. And I'm going to have two equations. One's going to be in purple. And I'm going to just do two different ones here. And one's going to be in green. And so the first possibility I can have is that the two lines meet on exactly one point. And we say this is the solution for the system. There is one point that has an x and a y value that solves both equations, whatever they are. The other possibility, one of the other possibilities, is that the two lines are parallel. Right, these are parallel lines, and they never meet. And so there are no solutions. And then in the third possibility, and this one's going to take me a second to draw, is that the line, the two equations actually end up having the exact same line. So imagine that the, the yeah, this green is the exact same place as the purple. And then we say there are infinite solutions. Because any point on the line would work for both, both systems. And so systems give us these three possibilities. I can get one unique solution, I can get no solutions, or I can get an infinite amount of solutions. Anything I put in for x will return something in y that'll work for both. And so we want to see what these look like um, depending on what, we, on, on what we do. So here we have the graphical. And so one method of solving is to graph the equations and to find, find the point of intersection or to see that they don't intersect. So let's look numerically at what happens. So I'm going to use an example here um, in, from the book and we will um, use graphing as our solution. So let me grab x plus 2y, so x plus 2y, x plus 2y equals 2, and uh, x minus 2y equals 6. 
Now I want to do a couple things here that the book doesn't do. Um, just to graph these, I want to graph them by hand first so we can see some things that are happening numerically with them and then I'll graph them with technology so we can get a better um, number out of them. So I want to do the green one in green and the yellow one in yellow. So let me change the color of my axes here and make the axes um, blue so that it doesn't get confused with the yellow line. Turn on my ruler. There we go. There's my Y axes and there's my X axes. X, Y, and let's go with the green one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in point slope format. So I'm going to start with the green, X plus 2, Y equals 2. I'm going to subtract X from both sides, but I'm going to leave the X up front. Okay, right? subtract X from both sides, leave it up front. Then I'm going to divide by 2. And so now I have this in slope intercept form. So I know it intercepts at 1, and it has a slope of negative 1 half. So it goes down 1 and over 2. And so this is the green line solution. And so I'll be looking for solutions of where it intersects. So now let's look at the yellow equation. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to solve for y, so I get this slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to leave it up front so I can see what the slope is doing. Now I'm going to divide by negative 2. Right, if I divide by negative 2, negative over a negative is positive. And so I have, let's see, that's 2, so 3 is down here. Uh, so I'm going to rise 1 over 2, rise 1 over 2. So rise 1, so I'm going to have to go up 3 and over 6. Right. About there. And so the point I'm looking for Is going, is going to be here. This is my solution, the intersection point here. That's the solution. Now I did this quickly by hand just to show the technique. If we did this on graph paper, um, this point would be spelled out on the graph somewhere, a little bit easier than by hand. Well, let's look at our technology for this. Um, so I'm going to come back over to Desmos here. That's Desmos. There we go. And we're gonna we're we're gonna put in both um, lines. So we're gonna start with the x plus two y equals two. And so there's the first graph, which matches what I drew by hand. And we had x minus two y equals six. And there is our point of intersection for negative one. And so that's the solution for comma negative one. Well, let's come back here. Let's write this on our graph here. Four comma negative one is the answer. Well, what that means is four for x and negative one for y should solve both of these. So I'm going to substitute them in to the green here. So wherever I see x, I put in four. And wherever I see y, I put in negative 1. And so 4 minus 2 equals 2. And 2 equals 2, so that's true. So we know the first equation is checked off. And then so 4 minus 2 times minus 1 equals 6. So a negative times a negative is positive, so 4 plus 2 is 6 equals 6. That's true. And so this is the solution for both equations. And we solve that graphically.
Well, let's look at another way of doing this with the same equation here. Let's not use it graphically. Let, let's let algebra do it for us. And so I want to take x plus 2y equals 2 and x minus 2y equals 6. And what I'm going to think about here is this is a left-hand side and this is a right-hand side. And this tells me whatever the left-hand side is, is equal to this. So this is a number that is equal to this number. And this is another number that is equal to this number. Well, there's things I can do with numbers. I can add numbers. I can subtract them, right? I can add, I can subtract, I can multiply, I can divide. All of those are possible here. Well, if I add these two equations, if x plus x is 2x, 2y plus negative 2y is 0. I've canceled out my y's, and 2 plus 6 is 8. And what I'm doing is I said I'm taking whatever this number is, and I'm adding it to this number. That gives me this. But because these two things are equal, this is equal to me adding this and this. But notice what this addition did for us. It got rid of one of our variables. And so now I can solve for x. Divide both sides by 2, and I get 4. And if I substitute 4 into any one of these, I'm going to put it into this one up here, so I'm going to get our, the bottom one. So I'm going to put, take the 4, and I'm going to slam it back into here. So I get 4 minus 2y equals 6. And I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by negative 2. And I've got my solution set. I've got 4 comma negative 1, which is what we saw graphically. And so the algebra of the system can help us find a solution. By adding the two equations, we are able to get a, get a solution. All right, let's look at another an example here. And the example I want to look at is 3x plus 2y. So let me come down here. Let me change colors. 3x plus 2y is equal to 48. And 9x minus 8y. is equal to negative 24. So if we look at this, if I add these, nothing is going to cancel out nice and neat for me yet. And so what I want to do is I want to change these in some way um, that they, they'll work for me. And remember, this is just a number at the end of the day. It doesn't look like it because we have variables in it. But I'm, I'm free to do anything I want. What's nice is I have an addition here and a negative here. So if I were to add these, they would cancel each other out. In fact, it would be really nice if both of these were 8. And so to make both of these 8, I'm going to multiply the top by 4. And I'm going to multiply this whole number by 4, which means I have to multiply the other side by 4. So I'm just going to write it as a big distribution. And I'm, this 4 is going to distribute to each part of the equation. So that's going to give me 12x plus 8y is equal to, well, 4 times 8 is 2, carry my 3, 192. Now this, I'm not changing. And so now, I'm going to add. And so I get 21x these cancel out is equal to um, let me do my subtraction 8 8 6 168 let me see 4 2 yep and now I'm going to divide both sides by 21 and 100 and oh, let's see 8 x goes in there 8 times right because 8 times 21 is 8 168 and so I have my x value. Notice our job here was to find the things that could cancel. 
and I multiplied by the top equation by that, so I got rid of one variable. We call this elimination. I'm eliminating a, a variable. But now I have to take this 8 and put it into one of these. So I think I'm going to use the, the top equation up here. I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to go 3 times 8 plus 2y equals 48. So 24 plus 2y equals 48. Now I'll subtract 24 from both sides, and so y equals 12. And I now have my solution. It is the point 8 comma 12. Well, I can double check that. So let's put 8 and 12 into both equations. So 3 times 8 plus 2 times 12 equals 48. So 3 times 8 is 24 plus 24, and yes, 48 equals 48, that is true. So this does solve the first equation. Let's try it in the second equation. So 9 times 8 minus 8 times 12 equals negative 24. So 9 times 8 is 72 minus, oh, what is 8 times 12? 96 equals negative 24. And that's negative 24. And that's true. And so this point solves both equations. And this is our solution using the elimination method. There's one other method that's related to the elimination method, and that's called substitution. What we can do with substitution is if we can get our equation in the form of one variable. Make sure I have this written down right. Negative x. Oh, I have this backwards here. Give me a second. I have x plus y equals negative 1. That's what I need. x plus y equals negative 1. And 4x minus 3y equals 24. And what we're going to do here is we'll solve for y. So y minus x minus 1. And what this is saying is wherever I see y, I can replace it by this. So I can come over here, and wherever I see y, I can replace it by this. So that's what an equal sign does for me. It says, this thing gives me this. So I can get rid of this thing by substitution. And now I'm going to distribute a negative times a negative is positive 3x. Plus 3 equals 24. So 7x plus 3 equals 24. I'll subtract 3 from both sides. And now I'll divide by 7 and I get x equals 3. And now I have a formula that will tell me what y is because I solved everything in terms of y. So y equals negative, and I'll substitute that in for the x, or minus 4. And so my solution set is 3 minus 4. And we'll have to and I'll leave it to you to double check that. But so this is what systems are. Systems are things that come together to, to give us solutions. And, and systems um, help us make when simultaneous things are true. And I'm going to end systems with a very, very common example in the business world. And that, that's the break-even point. And what we can do is we can look at two things that go into... Um, making manufacturing and selling a product. So the first is the cost function. And so the cost function is when I'm going to manufacture a, a, a product there's some overhead. Some um, cost, like this could be the man hours, it could be something that, that's going to happen um, for a given period of time. And so that is usually a, a constant. The overhead is constant. It doesn't change. And the other thing is the cost per item. So for each item I make, 
there is a cost per item, and that's usually variable. And so when I make the cost function, what I end up doing is I have some cost per unit of thing I'm making is well, what the cost per item is. So the cost per item is going to be some number times how many items I make. And let me see what the variable. Your book doesn't even use a variable for it. It just uses words. So I'm going to say that the cost per item is going to be little c. Cost per item is little c. And then the overhead I'm going to write as a big O. I don't want to make it look. I don't want to make it look like a zero. Um, so let's see. Overhead is usually. Um, well, I'll go C. I'll make it D for right now. And so this is a cost function. So for everything I make, this is how much money it's costing me. And then we can have the revenue function. The revenue function is how much money it's making me. And so when I go to sell it, um, this is how much money I get back. Well, revenue is usually the sale price per item. And so we can usually have the sale price, sale price per item. Now these two equations are happening simultaneously. Revenue will be a positive slope and cost will be a negative slope. And where they meet is the break-even point. This is me losing money and me making money. And when we're on this side of the graph, we're losing money because the loss is bigger than the gain. When we're on this side of the graph, we're making money because the revenue is bigger than the cost. And so the break-even point kind of tells me the number of units I need to sell to make a profit. Well, we see what we have here. We have two equations with two unknowns. And so any of the techniques we've used, the graphing technique, the elimination technique, or the, or the substitution um, technique will solve those. So let's, let's do um, a revenue and cost function. So um, a company is planning to manufacture wheelchairs. Uh, it's going to cost half a million dollars to get started and four hundred dollars per wheelchair. So our fixed cost, our cost function is we're going to make four hundred dollars per wheelchair and we're going to have half a million as our fixed cost. We're going to sell each wheelchair for $600. So our revenue is going to be 600x. And so what we want to find is the break-even point, or the point where these two things come together. And so what we want to do is we want to put these two equations together and find an answer for these. So we're going to want to find the intersection. So let's do it like this. Let's, let's, since we're going to graph these, we're going to turn this to y. Well, we're not going to graph, we're going to borrow from graphing. And this to y. And so notice I have y equals something in x, and y equals something in x. But that's y, and that's y. So I can substitute. And I'm going to substitute this 600 over into here. So 600x equals 400x plus half a million. Now we're going to subtract the 400 from both sides. And now I'm going to divide by 200. So let's see, I want to get rid of the two zeros at first, right? We'll get rid of those two zeros, and now we'll divide by 2. 
So 2 goes into 5 twice. 5, 0. And I get that I need to sell 2,500 wheelchairs to break even. And the revenue that we get, or the amount of money that we'll, we'll pass through, right? The revenue and the cost, and we'll do 600 times 2,500. So let's see, zero, 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 carry my three, 15, right? Six times 25 is 150, and I've got four zeros at the end. And so, it's going to take 1.5 million in revenue to break even, or 1.5 million in cost. I'm going to spend 1.5 million dollars before I make any money. Now, if you time it right, the money coming in can cover the costs. So you don't need that 1.5 million up front, but that's the risk you take in, in working for um, trying to make a profit on this type of good. Right. So uh, th that's linear functions and how they work.